if you go up to your customize menu and you go to unit setup then it'll pull up this dialog box and this is basically where you set up uh, the scale now the scale in max is it has two components the first one which is the one that everybody kind of sees and thinks is the scale is the display unit scale the second is if you click this button you get the system unit scale the difference between these two is that the system unit scale is kind of like the baseline scale that the uh, that max uses so one unit is equal to in this case one centimeter which is correct but if I set this to one meter then when a file goes out of max it will make that uh, it will make one unit equal to one meter being as unreal as one unit equals one centimeter it kind of makes sense that these two should be the same so that's what we're doing so one unit is equal to one centimeter once we've done that we can click OK good to go however there's another scale system and the other scale system is the display unit scale the display unit scale is basically what you see when you're making stuff so if I set my display unit scale to metric meters then when I hit OK and I go to make a box in a space when you look inside here the parameters are length let's make this nice and easy length 1 is 1 meter width 1 is 1 meter height 1 is 1 meter whereas now if I go to my go back up to customize go to unit setup and I change this to millimeters and hit OK suddenly all of these things have changed to say 1000 millimeters the box hasn't changed it hasn't got any bigger it hasn't got any smaller but the way that we the measurements that we work in have changed so this is really a personal choice it's what really you're happy working in so if you're happy working in meters then you can just go back and set it up and say right I want to work in meters there we go the next part is setting up the um, how the grid works and the grid here is really really tiny at the moment so it's not that useful and we have no snaps so this thing can move around it's free as a bird so the way we deal with that is our snap toggles are up here so they work in a very similar way to how unreals does this is the the movement one and this is the angle one and in the movement one there are you can have 2d and you can have two and a half d and you can have 3d but we're just going to stick with the 3d for now so if i click that now you can see i get this yellow thing around my cursor telling me what i can snap to now that's based on what's in the uh, the setup for that so if i right click on this, this icon it will bring up my grid and snap settings in this first panel we've got snap so anything that's ticked here is something that it, it will use to snap to on this grid so if I switch off grid lines and I just use verts then I can pick up an object by its vert and I can snap it and if I switch that off uh, we'll get to that in a minute I should be able to snap it if I snap it to another vert I can't snap it to anything because I'm not snapping to a grid point so if I switch grid points on then what I should be able to do is pick that up by a vert and snap it to a grid point. Now this little green thing is just a little helper to tell you where you're coming from and where you're kind of going to. So, so if you've got grid points on, you can snap to the grid. If I've got vertex points on, I can pick up a vertex and I can snap to another vertex. If I make another box, grab that a duplicate of it, put it somewhere else, uh, copy, then I can select that and I can snap it to that. Look, you can see it snaps to it. And... So snaps are really, really useful. I use vertex probably the most, uh, but you can snap by pivot. So I can pick the center of this, ob this, this object up by its pivot, and I can snap it by its pivot, uh, which is useful. But there's all sorts of stuff. You can pick things up by edges. You can snap to other edges, um, along edges. However, this grid is really, really small, and we haven't set it up to be the size we want it to be. So let's have a look at that. So if we go jump across to user grids, then oh sorry home grid even we can change this grid spacing so at the moment it's got a grid spacing of 0.1 meter so that means that every grid point there's 0.1 meter and we have a major line every nth grid line so every 10 of these uh, we get a grid line and um, so this is one of these like more major lines and this is the uh, extent of the grid of the grid so if we change this to say a thousand 
to start with, then our grid is suddenly a lot bigger, uh, which is maybe more useful. Now, we're working with a five centimeter grid. Uh, so if I'm working in meters, then five centimeters is going to be 0 0.05 meters, if my maths is correct. And that's, so that's changed those to half the size that they were. Because of that, I probably want to keep this around 10. So if that's, uh, if there's 10, five centimeters before there's a grid line, for one of this light, it's really hard to see it, but um, you can kind of see this gray line and this black line, and there's another gray line there. That means that that's half a meter, basically. Um, so two of those is equal to a meter. So if, let's just check that out. So, and the cool thing is, is if I start to go out, uh, so I'm working on things of a bigger, uh, a bigger scale, it actually gets rid of that and it just shows you the major grid lines. So I know that that's half a meter. Uh, and that's a full meter. So if we test that out, if I make a box, oh, this is the cool thing as well. Now I've got the snaps on. Uh, let's open this up. So I've got grid points and vertex snaps on. I can actually build to the grid um, and it will respect it. It's the same going vertically as well. So there we go. So I've made a box which is a meter by a meter by a meter. And if you see, there's major grid lines one, two, three. So that's to there, to there's half a meter, to there's a meter, so it's a meter long. So if I build something which is half a meter, uh, so I can go along like this and check as I go along. And I'm actually just checking that in the parameters. Oh, I made it. Look at that. Right at the last minute, I screwed it up. 0.5. to the grid so that's half a meter <clears throat> and if I want to make something which is five centimeters then I create a new box and I can go to here bum bum and bum and it's snapping at five at zero point zero five meters and just to prove that that is correct in case my maths is absolutely terrible um, let's go and just change the unit setup. Let's change this uh, the display unit setup. So let's change this to centimeters. Hit OK. There you go. That's a five centimeter box, which means this is. We can see it. A fifty centimeter box, and this should be a hundred centimeter box, which is a meter. So yeah, there we go. So we're learning about the metric system as well. So yeah, so they're the basics. The thing that I switched off earlier when we were looking at this, and I was kind of like, oh yeah, we'll get to that in a bit. I'll just go over that really quickly. When you're working with stuff with grids, I like to keep this open um, so that I can kind of flick between these things. In the options, there's this, enable access constraints. Now, a lot of the time, it's a pain to work with because essentially what it does is it tries to constrain things to axes. Um, but it does have its uses. So if I have it on and I'm trying to kind of move things around more freeformly, it, it doesn't really want to do it. It, it. it wants me to move it, you know, along along an axis that I've chosen. Um, and that's useful, can be useful, but a lot of the time it's a pain because actually what you want to do is you just want to move stuff and sort of snap things to things. So I want to take this and I want to snap it to that and I want to take this and I want to snap it to that, you know then the, the axis constraint is going to get in my way. However, one of the areas where the axis constraint is really awesome is when you're modeling. <clears throat> Say I've put these three items in. And what I want them to do is I all want them to be the same height as this one. I mean, I could go in and I could go into a front view and kind of like line them all up, you know, and, and do all that kind of stuff. But actually using the axis constraint, it's it's really easy. So if I just convert this to an editable poly really quick and say I just want this edge. And I want to uh, scale that edge to be the same height as this. Then if I leave the enable access constraints on and I grab this edge and I select the, the vertex of this because I've got the snap on for verts here. 
then it will pull that edge up to be the same height. But it won't move it in any other direction. It will just, because I'll, so I'll show you that again. So essentially what I'm doing is, if I put the wireframe on so you can see what I'm doing, I'm selecting that edge and I'm moving it in Z. So I'm moving it up or down. And if I just move this green thing over to this vertex, it will take the height from that, but it will only move it in the Z direction. So say I wanted the front of this to be level with this, I can grab this edge, grab the X, so it moves this direction, and I basically just snap it to that corner, and it will be perfect. Now, when you're doing modular stuff, when you're modeling in general, it's really useful, but when you're doing modular stuff, that is like mega useful. So, and you could do it on everything, like I could select a face here. So I could, I could grab this object, and convert it to editable poly, and I could grab its face, top face, and I start to pull it, and I want to make it the same height as that. And I want this face to come out here, so I grab it in X, and I get it to there. And I've now got a piece that would fit there perfectly. When you're moving things around normally, it's a right pain in the bum. Uh, so I want to move this now, and I want to try and get it to go to connect to this. It just doesn't want to know, um, because I'm not doing it on an axis constraint. So if I switch that off, and then grab this point, um, yeah, it's happy for me to move it. 